Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for motion matching for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to start learning about tags. Now, what exactly are tags and why would we want to do them? Well, if you understand how motion matching works, you know that it fluidly flows through animations as we're going based on motion. But how do we then differentiate between general locomotion and combat or something like crouching how do we tell the system hey I'm now crouching please use crouching animations well this is done with the tagging system and more specifically the required tags now there are different types of tags there's favor tags there's user tags but we're gonna focus on required tags for this tutorial so how do we then use required tags to basically define our characters stances I mean it can be used for more than just stances but this is the main use that I find for it. So let's close this and look at the preprocessor for our knight character. Now, the first thing we need to do when setting up tags is we need to just define our tag names. Now, this is literally just saying what tags exist. Now, for performance reasons, the tags are um, limited to 32 because it uses an enum flag of type integer. If you don't know what that means don't worry about it just know that you've got 32 or 30 slots actually to define your tag names the last two slots are reserved for MXM and specifically the do not use tag we will learn um, how to use that ironically uh, to do some pretty cool stuff but let's focus on the ones we can define. So you can see here, I've actually defined a whole bunch of stances, um, crouch and combat, and one that isn't really a stance, it's more like a state of motion where we're strafing. So instead of turning to go which way we're going, we're always facing the same direction and we're strafing. So we can use any one of these tags or any combination of these tags to get different types of animation. So you can imagine we have combat, we can have combat and strafing, we can have crouching, and of course no tag is my general lo is what I use for general locomotion, so none. Um, but you could combine that with strafing to get locomotion, general locomotion with strafing. So if that didn't make any sense, don't worry about it. We're still just at the point of defining what our tag names are. So we can close that once we've defined a stance that we want to have when we're ready to you know, do stances. And let's go to our animations. And we're going to look at our composites first. And of course, in the standalone demo, I have a lot of animations and they're broken down into a whole bunch of categories. I like to break down my categories so that all the animations in a specific category have the same tag. So you can see my walk animations here. They all have a require tag of none. So if I double click on it, I get the composite editor and I can set a tag globally for that entire animation um, by clicking on this drop down here that says require next to it. Again, ignore favor tagging, that's for a later tutorial and it does something completely different. So here we can see my crouch, strafe and combat tag. And of course, because this is a flag field, I can have multiple. So it says mixed now and both strafe and combat are ticked, but of course, this is a walk forward start. It is a um, general locomotion tag. Now, I don't use tags or required tags to differentiate between walking and running. That is done using our trajectory and, or change, changing our max speed or whatever. Um, or if you can't get it to behave with that, you use favor tags, which again, we'll talk about in a later tutorial. So general locomotion stance, no tag. Let's have a look, let's go down further. Now we have general locomotion with strafing. Now these all just have a strafe tag. You could think of it as they have a strafe tag and a none tag if you that makes you feel better, but it's just a strafe tag by itself. Go down to my crouching category and you can see that I've tagged everything in the crouching category with a crouch tag. Go down to our sword locomotion and again, everything in my sword locomotion is tagged with combat. And let's go down further to our sword strafe. This is the one where we're using multiple tags. All my sword strafe animations are tagged with two tags, combat and strafe. So this is how we can globally tag every pose in the animation. Now remember when MXM preprocesses, it makes a database of poses every pose interval. If you need a recap on that, the pose interval is what we set up the top here, 0.05 seconds in this case. So it makes a pose for everything and it stores the required tag that you have. Obviously, if you leave it as none, it's not gonna, it's gonna keep that tag as none. 
So now we know how to define our tags. We know how to actually tag our animations globally. How do we then tell the system, hey, I require this tag. So let's dive into a little bit of code and I'm not going to do an example. I'm just going to show you some of the code from the standalone demo and I'm going to go to my character in the standalone demo. Obviously you don't have access to this. However, if you join the discord, I can give you verified status and you can download this player controller script that we're about to look at so you can study it and see how I have coded the um, standalone demo. <clears throat> Just a reminder, once you get on the Discord, send me an invo your invoice ID through a PM and I will give you the verified status. So let's have a look at this player controller script. Now, we're not going to go into detail. It's a very big script. It's very complex. It has all the logic for combo system and everything. So let's just look at one function, this begin strafe function. You don't need to know how it's called. Just know that somewhere when I transition into a strafing mode, this function is called. And even in this function, we don't really need, we're not going to worry about all this other stuff for now. We're just going to look at this one here, add required tag. This is just one method to add a required tag. So let's say up here in our code, the current state of our tagging in MXM is we don't require any tags. So we've got none. That's our tag there, right? That's the tags that are currently required in the system. So now I can go to the MXM animator. Uh, sorry, MXM animator. Now this is just a reference to the MXM animator component. You get it with get component, just like any other Unity component. Um, and we can say set required tag, and let's say combat. So this is another function we can use, set required tag. Now this sets the required tag. So now we have a combat tag. Now, if we want to add to the already existing tag, so we've the already existing tag now is combat, we can call these add required tag functions. So after calling this function, the required tags in the system are now combat and strafe. Now I'm gonna show you something. If we then set the required tag to combat, then we're actually overriding everything to just combat. All right, so just understand the difference. We're setting, we're overriding everything to be that tag. And in this case, the add required tag, we're adding to the existing stack of tags that we're using. Okay, so what if I now want to just get rid of all the tags um, and just go back to general locomotion, no tags. We can go animator.clear required tags. So that will clear all the tags and now we have none again. And Instead of doing that there, let's go here and we can also remove specific tags. So we don't want to clear them all, but we want to remove them. So we can remove a required tag. Let's remove the combat tag in this case. And now in the system, we have a strafe tag. So you can see the sort of flow here. Up here in our code, at this very point in time, we're, we're stepping through our code. There's no tags defined. We then set it to a combat tag. Now. In the system, a combat tag is required. If we then add a required tag, now a combat and strafe is required. Then we then remove the required tag, now only strafe is required, and then we can clear the required tags, and now there's nothing is required. So these are the four main functions used to manage tags in, in MXM. Now there's different variants of each of these. Uh, we have MXM animator set required tag and we can use an integer this is just a id of the tag from from 0 to 31 uh from 0 to 32 sorry and um it's not as intuitive as the string because you've got to know what number the tags are and can be confusing um however it's there if you want to use it and we also have set required tags now note that this is plural tags, e tags dot whatever. Now <clears throat> the thing about e tags enumeration is that it is actually a flag field, which means you can store multiple tags because it's going by the bits. Um, so you can do your bit shifting, you can combine tags together into a single e tags enumeration, and then you can set required tags as you go. Now if you do not know how to do this, don't worry about it. Just stick with uh, the simple version where you can literally just say the name of course if you want to be more optimized uh, you can use these other types now you've got the same thing for add required tag and remove required tag so that is 
all well and good. The only other one that's worth noting is MXM animated dot clear all tags. Now, word of caution on this one, this is going to clear favor tags as well. And we haven't really talked about favor tags yet. So um, <clears throat> just unless you want to clear all your tags favor and required, then don't use this one. So there we go. Those are the tagging functions. There's not much more to it. Once we have, so say we get to this point here in our code, combat and strafer is required. Now the anim MXM animator, when it's searching for animations, it's going to only pick animations that have combat and strafe. Now don't worry, the system is not wasting its time iterating over animations with combat and strafe. It cleverly organizes the animation pose data into specific bins so that um, when you set the required tag, it only goes to those specific bins. It's, it's clever in that way. So there we go. That's how we code with require tags. Now, before we end the tutorial, you might think that that's it, but there is a lot more. We can get a lot more granular with our tagging and we still haven't looked at the do not use tag. So let's go back to our preprocessor and let's get a little bit more granular. And for this, I'm actually going to go to the MXM demo scene instead. And we're going to also find the preprocessor for the demo scene. That's here. And we're going to look at this because tagging at a more granular level is more useful with motion capture data where you might have a lot of data um, and you might have different tags within the same clip. Generally with cut clips, you're going to find that the whole clip has the same tag, like a combat stance. You're not going to get half an animation with combat stance and half without. So it's more relevant, uh, this granular level of tagging to mocap takes. So let's just double click on this and we've already looked at our global tagging. So let's have a look at our granular tagging. So we can use the MXM timeline for this. And if you don't have the timeline open, you can click on open timeline in the top left here to get this little window. Now I'm going to drag my scene out here and we can preview our animation and hit play. And we can see it going through there. And here is our timeline. Now this track here, you can see that I actually have a track and it says do not use. Now this is a track for the do not use tag which we'll get into in a second, but you can actually make tracks for any of the tags that are created. So there's a combat stance. Um, I can create a track for combat stance. I can create a track for crouch. We can't have duplicate um, tracks because it's not necessary, but here we go. So at any point in our animation, let's say hypothetically, we have some combat from this point here in our time. We can click on this little button here and it creates a tag. We can move that tag around. We can change its size. Basically any animation poses in between this start and end of this tag is going to be tagged with combat. We can have multiple tags on a track um, as much as you like, depending on what you need. And of course we can then say, okay, well, hypothetically, let's say this is a crouch tag section from here to here. Now, obviously this doesn't make sense. This is all just general locomotion. Um, so I'm going to actually delete these tracks. So that's how we can more granularly tag our animations. Now, what about the do not use tag? Now, it sounds like you shouldn't use it, but that's not really what it means. It actually means that the system, the MXM system, shouldn't use any animations ever that are tagged with do not use. So I use these a lot to really refine my animations. Like if there's an animation I don't like, or I feel is unnecessary or is duplicating unnecessarily, I can, I tag it out. So in this case, we get to the end of our animation and there's a whole, there's a stop. And then there's something like almost two seconds of just idle. Now I've already have my idle set up with the idle set. So this is kind of wasted. There's going to be poses here that are um, being searched over that we're not even using. But not only that, it's just going to muddy up my thing. So if you look at this adult idle pose, the feet are all wrong. It's not the same as my normal idle. Additionally, I don't particularly want this run, this half baked run loop. I don't want it jumping around so I can tag that off as well. Let me show you another example that I actually find quite interesting. So where, let me find it. I'm going to have to cycle through until I get to it. Now it's a 135 plant, I believe. 
yeah, here it is. And let me just move my big blocks out of the way. So I'm going to play this animation from the start to the end, and you might be able to see some parts of the animation that we really don't need. Okay, so first of all, this beginning part. You see how the character spends a whole second leaning forward before he actually starts moving forward. That's not good for motion matching. That's actually really bad. Don't ever do that in a mocap um, take. You actually want to start explosively um, as much as you can. So this run start here is useless to me. I don't want it. I already have another run start animation. I do not want this to ever play. So I've actually tagged this whole start part as do not use. Now then I'd I have this section, this plant. Now that's the part that I want, so I'm not tagging that as do not use. Then we have a little bit of a section. Now, this is up to you, but like it's a bit of a run loop, but I've already got some really clean run loops, so I don't really want to use that one. Now, I've allowed it to take the stop animation. I should probably even tag that out because it's not a great stop. He takes one, two, three steps. Uh, but in this case, I've decided to keep it. And then the last part, look at this. He takes a step back and a half. I, I don't want that animation at all, so I tag that as do not use. I did mention in many previous tutorials that these raw mocap takes from Unity are very messy, and you can see why in this particular one. We can use the do not tag use tags to refine our animations and tell MXM, hey, do not ever use this. Now, you might think, well, maybe you should just cut them out of the clips. Not necessarily, because a lot of the time, even though it's a do not use pose, we still need it to be able to iterate properly through our animations. I mean, to determine um, our trajectory for our animations. Uh, again, don't worry, anything that's tagged as do not use will not be searched, so you're not wasting performance there. So there we have it. Tags, require tags. We can use it for stances, we can use it for modes of movement, and we can use it to get rid of animations that we don't like. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you've learned how to get more control over your animations with Motion Matching for Unity. Thank you all for watching, I will see you in the next video where we're going to talk more about other tag types like favor tags, user tags and utility tags, all of which help us to just make motion matching do basically anything we want. See you in the next video.